Alright, thanks for coming along for this next instalment of the Animatronic Rod Puppet Project. I'd say I've been up to a fair amount these last few weeks. There's plenty to cover, so let's get into it. In my last video, I was showing you a mechanism that I was working on that would pretty much rotate the head and move most of the, the body. And I've just taken that further. I've just kind of fleshed it out with a basic skeleton made out of hoses. Most of the parts I discussed again in my last video. But this body here, I mean, we're, it's really con constructed from a Nescafe coffee lid. That's the uh, the top of the torso. That's it's got those appendages, those arms coming off, and um, it gives a pretty pretty cool range of movement. So the skeleton also helps support and give it some st stability as I'm moving it around. And this is a small hand mechanism that I've got in mind. It's a little prototype that I just printed out and designed it in Fusion 360. I just wanted some things to give, give the arms some basic movement. And here's the mechanism for the open and close side to side of the mouth. I just made a little controller for the time being. Maybe this will be replaced with a servo bank, but I wanted uh, just something so I could actually puppeteer it and play with it as I'm, as I'm constructing it. And, and that's that side to side chewy motion I was talking about in my last few videos. Looks pretty good. The hub that's in there, that aluminium part, is a, a high tech servo mount. Just a couple of springs. And here's that zebra sculpture I started a few weeks ago. I showed it in one of my, uh, my previous videos. I'm just taking it further really to try and finish it. I'm just gonna add some color and some detail here and there and try and render out a couple of designs. I've only been using ZBrush about a month or so, so it's just a very basic, quick sketch essentially to give me an idea of what the character will eventually look like. And here's the final render. Looks pretty good. So I think I said in my first video that I'm kind of doing this project back to front. I, yeah, I'm trying to understand the mechanisms that go into an animatronic as well as uh, designing the detail and finish on the outside. So I'm kind of doing each step as it goes. So this, this under skull here, designed around my mechanism that I designed in Fusion 360, this piece of software is Blender. So I designed this in, in Blender and 3D printed the parts. I 3D printed a little key there that works as a base. Th this was printed in a pretty strong PLA, but I'm gonna back this up with, with fiberglass afterwards. So I just sliced it up, printed each section, and I'm just gluing it together with epoxy here. just gluing the key together here. This kind of doubles as a base, but also when I go to make a, a silicone matrix mold, it'll have a, a hard core around it, but it'll, it'll, it'll take the impression of the silicone, or rather the silicone will take the impression of this base, and it should help it lock together a bit nicer. So just trying to carefully line everything back up. So this is the uh, the two-part epoxy I'm using for the fiberglassing. It's a one-to-one, -one. it's by Smiths Brothers, uh, and it's a structural epoxy, so it'll, it'll dry it, it'll cure it nice and strong. And this um, fiberglass cloth here is a, a woven roving. I think it's called a woven roving. It's a type of fiberglass cloth, 
Uh, and I think this was a light or a light to medium. That's the a light to medium weight of the cloth. So th this is just tap tapping the glass down um, onto the sheets of glass down onto the uh, the tacky surface. I just gave it one layer first, let it kind of partially cure up and and it just helps everything grip together a bit better. And this is just for support essentially, just on the inside to give it some structural integrity. I mean, it's gonna be um, locking into a silicone mold and it, it shouldn't, I beg your pardon, it's gonna be locking into a urethane mold. So it's not necessarily gonna be under a, tr a tremendous amount of stress, just enough to support. I'm trying to tap out any air bubbles that might be captured underneath this glass. I mean, that's a good thing to do a, a layer of the resin first and try and get a, a foundation down. So when you go to lay these sheets of glass at any awkward angles, it doesn't want to kind of peel off and instead it fixes down really nicely, you just, just tap it down and apply enough resin. I'm just fitting these together now. And it's not going to, the edges and seams aren't going to be 100% perfect, but I'm going to patch and fill it and, and sand it down later, so it's not really a, a big issue at the minute. I'm going for structural integrity over aesthetics at the moment. So I'm just kind of patching and bonding the inside and the seams together here. Give it one last layer just to kind of smooth everything out and fill everything up. So this is cured overnight. I'm just going to use some leap putt here just to patch up some of these little overhangs. When you 3D print, especially if you use a raft, it kind of screws up that first layer, gets a little squished. So inevitably you're going to have to do some sanding here and there. I'm just trying to minimize the uh, amount of overhang that it has with, with the millie putt. And uh, I'm just sanding it out here. This is a PLA X3 supplied by 3D Filler Print based in Essex. These, these guys are great. I'm just trying to make everything as smooth as possible, especially this base area because it's going to be into intersecting with a with a mold later and just brushing on a couple of layers of XTC 3D a smooth on product that just kind of smooths out your 3D prints and I mean it's good for all kinds of things you want to just have a, a nice self-leveling smooth layer you can use this stuff and you can mix this stuff by weight or volume I just use the little uh, little beaker it comes with Okay, as mentioned, I'm kind of learning everything as I'm going along. So one of the other things I'm gonna need is a set of eyes for this animatronic. So what I'm doing here is just creating a mold so I can cast a, an outer eyeball, and I'm gonna show you some of the steps I do to, um, to go about that. It didn't quite work out the way I wanted, and I'll, I recorded the, um, the error. You know, I've just got a nice flat base and uh, a cup that I placed over there, just hot gluing around the edges to make sure that no silicone leaks. And then I filled it up with some platinum cure silicone. And I'm just gonna peel away that cup. And what I get is a negative of the sphere that I just placed onto that mold block. And it came out okay. So I 3D printed this eyeball, and I'm just using these little taxidermy eyes as an insert to see how this goes. I was thinking if I can glue these in place, and uh, pop this back into the mold with some clear uh, acrylic or clear epoxy resin, which I'm going to use. Um, it might look quite good. The um, good thing with the taxidermy eyes is they kind of it kind of bulges out like that corneal bulge you get on a real eyeball. And even though it's going to be sealed, um, when the light hits it, it might give quite a good effect. But this is kind of just an experiment, and how I went about doing it. 
I just 3D printed this little um, stopper that can uh, the eyeball can sit on whilst I'm casting it. I'm just using a bit of clay around the bottom there just to make sure that none of the two pieces stick together when I pop it back into the mould. So this is a smooth on uh, epoxy cast. It's a clear, it's a clear epoxy resin. It's a two part that you mix up. And uh, I've seen a bunch of tutorials with people using this, and there's a um, a good Stan Winston tutorial that shows you how to make eyeballs this way. The only issue is that they use a, um, a vacuum degasser, which obviously gets the air bubbles out. I don't have one of those, so I mean I let this stuff sit for about half an hour and try to burst as many air bubbles with the blow with the with the heat gun there. Obviously, it was on a cool setting, just trying to break the surface tension. Um, I got most of them out, I decided to pour it anyway, so I'm just doing a layer on the eyeball and on the block and just filling up that mould there and trying to put it back in with, with as little air trappage as possible. Just scraping off some of that excess there. And it didn't really, you know, it, it was full of bubbles. Um, like I said, the best way to, to do this would be to use a vacuum degasser and I don't have one. So what I thought, well, I wonder if I could just drip, <laughs> just pour this resin over the eyeball and build up in layers and see how that comes out. I'm just sketching on a couple of little lines there, little veins, and I'm just going to just very crudely and, and as an experiment just pour this stuff on top and see how it see how it looks. We'll come back to the eyes at a later period, but I just thought I'd show you this little experiment. And since we're talking eyes, we might as well have a look at these teeth. I've just 3D printed a little part that's going to stick inside the mouth there. I'm just using some clay and uh, my dad's a dental technician so I've got you know, hundreds of thousands of these teeth knocking around so I thought I'd just make a, a, little, a little set of dentures that I could pop into the animatronic's mouth. I'm just trying to sculpt a tongue and, and some other things. I'll probably have to do the throat as well when the, when the creature opens his mouth you'll obviously see in there. But these parts are just designed to fit back in. And they're pretty snug. So this is my core, this is what the sculpture will be done on top of. Um, from that I'll make a, a mould, obviously, and that will capture all the details so I can make a silicone skin. So I'll, I'll point out this error that I've done here. Obviously this is all looking nice and clean, I'm just filling up any of the deep areas because it's not really ideal when I go to make um, a mould out of this later on. Um, but I noticed that the eyes look a bit bulbous. When I went back and checked the 3D model I noticed that I'd essentially extruded 2mm outwards from those, those eyelids. Basically I just got my tolerances mixed up and essentially it's no good. So I was thinking can I cut them out? Essentially the inside of these eyelids will be 2 mil difference, that should be enough. But in the end I decided just to cut the face off, print a new one and start again. I had that new face printed out and glued back on there, it was absolutely fine. So with that fixed, basically I need to go about making a mould to create a negative of this so I can make a fibreglass underskull. Now the underskull is what's going to be attached to the uh, the mechanism itself, to the, to the animatronic body. This core that I'm using right here, that I'm drawing on with the pencil, is going to be for sculpting. So there's, it serves two different purposes and I'll show you how I uh, go about making this core. And the core itself, I'm going to make it out of plaster bandages. One thing I found out after, well, or say midway doing this, was that it's better to use a high quality plaster bandage, not the one you get from craft stores. I had a surplus of these cheap plaster bandages, so I opted to use them anyway. And, um, you know, just to jump ahead, I guess, it created a few blemishes on the underskull, but it wasn't really a big deal. Obviously, the, the better quality bandages will just give you a smoother finish when, you, when you're done. So I've just created a parting seam down the centre, I'm just going to coat the whole thing in Vaseline so these bandages don't stick. And just concentrate on one side first, working down from the parting line. I was being quite liberal with these bandages, I suppose um, 
there's maybe five or six layers. So I'm going to do the other side now, but I want to come over and I want to come over the lip of that first half that I've done. So just just by about an inch or so. I'm just going to coat it with Vaseline and give that uh, that side another coat as well, just to make sure nothing else sticks, and just slowly build up the layers. So I'm just going to leave this overnight, let it set, and then break it apart in the morning. So I'm just going to give one coat of Vaseline on the inside. As I said, I'm going to be covering this in, in layers of epoxy. And I'll basically do both halves separately and then put them together and join the two halves um, down, the, down the seam. So again, this is that 15 minute epoxy by Smith's Brothers. And just do one layer all over the surface and let that get kind of tacky and then start laying the, uh, the, the fiberglass. I'm just going to start laying in this cloth now and just overlap each piece that I put in over the other just to make sure I get a thorough coverage. So just work on, on both sides, one after the other, just, just lay down pieces of the fiberglass cloth, tap it in place with more of the resin and uh, I think I probably went up to maybe three layers, three or four, four in some areas. So now I'm just applying a bit more Vaseline to the edges of this mould and I'll join the two halves back together. So I've just cut up a few more strips of the fiberglass cloth and I'm just going to do one or two layers down that part and see to join the two halves. And open it up the next day. Like I said, a few blemishes, but other than that, it came out looking pretty good. A bit of clean up with the Dremel and it'll look okay. Just having a quick test fit, putting it on the puppet to see how it would look. I'm pretty happy, it'll certainly do for my purposes. Any of these deep areas can just be filled in with some of this milly putt. And a quick sand and smooth out and uh, it should be ready to go. So I hope that exemplifies some of the steps and techniques that go into making something like this. And like I said in my first video, I'm kind of building and figuring this out as I'm going along. I'm trying to learn all these techniques and combine them into a project that um, amalgamates a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the skills that you'd see from somebody in a, in a prop department or uh, as part of any creative team really. So I hope you're enjoying and um, thanks very much for coming along. I'll see you next time.